Today we continue with our series of design patterns with the factory pattern. The factory pattern comes in two versions, factory method and abstract factory. Today we will talk about the factory method and in the next design patterns video we will talk about the abstract factory. Factory method is a creational design pattern. Remember in the first video when we spoke about singleton we have three categories of design patterns. So if you want a refresher I will add the video in the description below. So factory method is a creational design pattern that provides an interface for creating objects in a superclass but allows subclasses to alter the type of the objects that will be created. The motivation for learning and implementing factory pattern is that we want to design flexible and reusable object-oriented software, meaning we need to create objects that are easier to implement, change, test and reuse. We can achieve that by following the solid principles of programming, decoupling the construction of the objects from the object itself. By doing that, we make sure that the code we write can easily be extended without having to modify the whole implementation or change the logic based on new requirements. As an example, we can think of a framework that has a way to extend its internal component. The framework doesn't know beforehand the exact type of objects the client will implement, so the factory method pattern comes to help by encapsulating the knowledge the client, in this case the subclass, will create and moves this knowledge out of the framework. We will understand this better when we will see the structure and implementation section. The structure and implementation of the factory method design pattern can be summed up in the following four points. One, Create the interface common to all objects that can be produced by the creator and its subclasses. 2. Create concrete implementations of the interface above. 3. The creator class declares the factory method that has the return type the interface above. 4. Concrete creators that overwrite the base factory method so it returns a different type of object based on the concrete implementation above. Applicability of the factory method design pattern or better said when to use factory design pattern. Use factory method design pattern when you don't know beforehand the exact types of the objects your code will work with. Factory method separates the product construction code from the code that uses the product itself. For example, to add a new product type you only need to create a new creator class. Use factory method when you want to provide a live or a framework with the possibility to extend its internal components. If you just inherit from the standard components, how can the framework recognize that it should use your class instead of the standard component? The solution is to keep the code that builds the components into a single factory method and let the client override this method in addition to extending the component itself. Use factory method when the current implementation cannot comfortably accommodate new changes. Use factory method when the implementation of an interface or an abstract class is expected to change frequently. I guess the last two points are self-explanatory. Pros and cons of the factory method design pattern. The pros are 1. Avoid tight coupling between the creator and the concrete products. 2. Single responsibility principle by moving the product creation into one place. 3. Open closed principle. You can introduce new types of products without breaking the existing code. And cons, in this case only one, the code may become complicated as you need to introduce a lot of new subclasses. Now before moving to the coding part of this video, let's go back into a final recap and see the things we have to remember. One, by using factory method pattern, you create code that is easy to extend and maintain. Two, factory method separates the product construction code 
from the code that uses the product itself. Three, you have to create the following components, a product interface, concrete products to implement the product interface, a creator class that declares the factory method, concrete creators that overwrite the base factory method so it returns the different types of concrete products. Now that we have discussed a bit the factory pattern and we are more aware what we are talking about, let's move to the coding part so that we can understand even better how to use and implement the factory method design pattern. First, we'll start with the Python implementation of the factory method design pattern. And I'm gonna create a polygon factory. And I'm gonna start with importing from ABC. I use this ABC package to help me enforce the interface rules. So I'm gonna say from ABC, import ABC meta. And I also want to import abstract static method. I'm going to start by creating the product interface, like we said before, and then we will have the concrete product implementations. So I'm going to call this interface iPolygon. Which will have as meta class the ABC meta. And I'm going to create a method for my product and I'm going to call it getType. I'm going to say polygon get polygon type. This will return the type of polygon. And I'm going to use a decorator for this and I'm going to say abstract static method. And because I use that decorator, I don't need to have an implementation for the method itself. But I'm just going to put a few comments here just to know what I have. And I'm going to say that this is a static interface method. And that's it. Now let's create the concrete products. So I'm gonna say the first point I want to have is a triangle, which will implement the I polygon interface. I'm gonna define here the constructor, and I'm gonna create a property called sides which in this case, a triangle has three sides. And I'm gonna also implement the polygon type method, which will also take self here as a parameter. And here I'm just gonna return triangle. So this is the concrete implementation, one of the concrete implementation of the polygon interface. Let's also create two more here. And another one so this one let's say I want to have a square implementation in this case I have four sides and I want to return square and a pentagon polygon which in this case I have five sides and I'm gonna call it a pentagon so we said that first we need to have an interface for the product. Second, we need to have concrete implementation of the product interface. In this case, the product interface is the I polygon interface. I have three concrete implementations. Now we'll create the factory class. So I'm gonna say class polygon factory. And here I'm gonna create a factory method called get polygon. Get polygon. And this one will get as a parameter the number of sides. So based on the number of sides, I will create the proper polygon. Now, I will also want to decorate this as a static method. So I'm gonna say, if number of sides equals three, then I want to return a triangle. If the number of sides equals 4, then I want to return a square. And if the number of sides equal 5, I want to return a pentagon. And I'm gonna say, if I have another value than 3, 4, 5 for the number of sides, I want to raise an assertion error with the message, no polygon was found. Yeah, 
perfect. Now I'm going to say here accept and I'm going to use my assertion error, accept assertion error as error and I'm going to print the error. And I'm also going to return none in case the number of sides is, dif is different than 3, 4 or 5. Now let's test our polygon implementation. So I'm going to say if name equals equals main then I'm gonna say I'm gonna create a polygon here and I'm gonna say polygon factory get polygon and let's say I want to get a triangle so I'm gonna say get polygon of 3 and now let's see what the factory returns so I'm gonna say print polygon get type so I'm gonna say polygon polygon type here and I'm also I also want to print the number of sides so I'm going to say polygon sides so as we can see we created our product interface the concrete implementations of the interface and the polygon factory here and now basically all I need to do is just call the factory with the number of sides and the factory will know which polygon will need to return a way to refactor the code I just wrote is by extracting these creation calls of triangle square and pentagon into their own factory classes so i can create a factory class for triangle square and pentagon which would extend the polygon factory class and then create the methods that return each of these polygons separately in their own factory classes and this would be step four from the slides that we just saw but for the purpose of this video I think it's much more simple to implement the factory method pattern like this so that you can see exactly what it actually does so now let's run our example so I'm gonna say Python polygon factory pipe. and as you can see I have a triangle and it has three sides now if I pass in, for example, let's pass in 4 as a parameter and I run it again, you see I get a square and 4 sides. So this is how easy it is to implement factory method pattern. Now we will continue with the Java implementation of the factory method pattern. Now we continue with the Java implementation of the factory method design pattern and we will start with the product interface and then we will create the concrete implementations and then we will create the factory. So let's start with the product interface. I'm gonna call it polygon.java and it's an interface and here I'm just gonna define one method which will be called getType and that's it. Now we will continue with the concrete implementations. We'll start with the triangle class, which implements polygon interface. So because it implements polygon interface, we have to implement the get type method, of course. Override and this one will return triangle. So that's it, very simple implementation of the concrete product triangle. Now let's create two more as we did in Python as well square and pentagon. The class square will also implement our polygon interface. And because it implements the polygon interface, we have to implement the method getType as well. And we call it here square. And let's do the same for pentagon. Pentagon also implements the polygon interface. And we will return here, of course, better. Great. Now that we created the product interface and its concrete implementations, let's create the factory class. So I'm going to call it Polygon Factory. And 
And once again, just as I said in the Python implementation, it's um, I could create this as an as a class with an abstract method that will be implemented in other factory classes, which will return the specific type of product. So I could create a triangle factory, a square factory, and a pentagon factory, and each of them would return a triangle square respectively and a pentagon. But uh, for the purpose of this video, so that we can better understand and how exactly factory method works we will implement only one factory the polygon factory and like that it will be much easier to visualize and understand so now I have the polygon factory I'm gonna create a method which would return a polygon I'm gonna call it get polygon and as we saw in the Python implementation I'm gonna say here number of sides and once again, I'm going to say if um, number of sides equals 3, return new triangle. I'm going to do the same for square and for pentagon. So I'm going to say if number of sides equals 4, then return a square. And if number of sides equals 5, then return new pentagon. We need to import them. And if we receive another number than 3, 4, or 5, I'm just going to return no. And that's it. This is the polygon factory class. Now let's test all that. So here in my main class, I will say I will instantiate the polygon factory. I'm going to create polygon here using the polygon factory and I'm going to say polygon factory dot get polygon and let's say we will get three as number of sides and I'm going to say let's print and let's print the polygon get type. So that we see what polygon the factory has created. So let's run this method and see how it works. So as you can see, I sent three sides. I received the triangle. Let's do the same. Let's say instead of three sides, I want to get four sides. We run it again and we get a square, as you can see here. And that's it. This is the Java implementation of the factory method pattern. I really hope that what I explained was clear enough. And if not, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. Also, if this helped you understand better the factory method design pattern, please give this video a like as it helps with the YouTube engine. Please subscribe and click the bell button to receive notifications as I release new content every week. I have three series so far, algorithms, design patterns and coding tutorials and I will add regularly to each of them and I will create new series to help you become a full stack well-rounded software engineer. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.